first speaker is Charles Greener. And the title of the talk is Problem Thermologic Transport with Atropod Thermals. Thank you okay. for the <laughs> introduction. And it's a real pleasure to be here. And thanks a lot to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to tell you about this work we've been doing almost recently with Corina uh, Kodat and Wendor. So, as you may have noticed, uh, transport is kind of a hot topic in uh, the cold atom community these days. Uh, one can mention, I mean, among lots of work, um, the observation of pin transport, for example, um, two, year, two years ago from now. Uh, transport of a strongly interacting both gas uh, loaded into an optical lattice, which was observed uh, in uh, Munich uh, more than a year ago. And one can also mention uh, the transport of, uh, in the presence of disorder, which is strongly related to questions, uh, subtle questions around undersomotelization. So this kind of work is done in the Institut de Pic in Paris and in France. Uh, and now, <coughs> one can also mention lots of uh, works, including, I mean, both on the experimental and theoretical sides. But the setup. I will focus in the next uh, 25 to 30 minutes is the following one, which was uh, realized in the group of Tilman Essinger in the ETH Zurich. What they did here is to engineer uh, a gas of fermion such that they create two reservoirs, which are connected by a small uh, conduction channel or a junction <coughs> where you can, uh, and you can. Actually, you can play a lot with this, uh, with this construction. For example, you can imagine that, as always with cold atom, you can tune the strengths of interactions. You can play with the transport regime. You can make it ballistic or diffusive by imposing uh, a speckled potential in this construction. You can imagine also to include the effect of an optical lattice. But uh, the point, uh, let me stress it already at this stage is that you cannot observe real DC transport since you have finite reservoirs which contain a finite number of particles. So if you look at transport, you will have to look for transient effect, not DC, not DC effect. Um, so what they did with, this, uh, with their new toy is you observe, I mean, various uh, conduction regimes in, uh, different, in different situations. So what they did first is to look at the relaxation of a particle imbalance between the two reservoirs. So in this case, they observed this uh, nice exponential decay, and they uh, and they looked at uh, the evolution of the resistivity within uh, the constriction, both in the diffusive and in the ballistic cases. Uh, they also did uh, experiments with in the superfluid regime, and essentially what they observed is the drop of resistance. Uh, when they enter into the, into the BCS regime. But what interested us is more the, the first experiment uh, with the, in the normal phase. And in this case, what they did, so they, they load uh, one of the two other worlds, and what they really did is to observe uh, the discharge of a capacitor, which in, which in this case is nothing but the two other words, and the discharge of this capacitor into a resistor, which in this case is the junction between the two other words. <coughs> so what they did is nothing but a simulation of mesoscopic physics, but with cold atoms. And the question that we now ask is, can this setup uh, demonstrate of diagonal transport? And more precisely, can this setup uh, be used to uh, couple particle and heat transport? This is, these are the, the thermoelectric effects we are looking for. And to answer this question, I will first present our general framework and then try to make a proposal to observe these thermoelectric effects and try to make some experimental signal estimates. So this is the, the setup as we, as we picture it. And uh, we have our two reservoirs, which are defined by their temperature and chemical potentials. These two reservoirs are connected by a junction which is uh, considered to be in the linear response regime. So it is, it's just simply described by this uh, linear response coefficient matrix. 
and the, the two reservoirs exchange particle and entropy. Um, the two reservoirs are also defined and described by their uh, thermodynamic coefficients, which are kappa, the compressibility, C mu, uh, the specific heat at constant chemical potential, and a dilatation coefficient, uh, alpha, which is uh, the derivative of the particle number with respect to temperature at fixed chemical potential. So this, uh, this approach uh, is quite uh, used in mesoscopic physics. The idea is to look at uh, the wire between the two reservoirs as some kind of black box that responds linearly. This is a linear circuit picture, which is, as I said, omnipresent in mesoscopic physics. And within this linear response uh, framework, we have that the particle and entropy current are related to the chemical potential and temperature difference between the two reservoirs by this matrix L, which is symmetric to respect the Ronsager symmetry relation. Uh, then making uh, one more assumption, which is that the evolution within the reservoirs is quasi-static. You can uh, now make use of thermodynamics, which will tell you that uh, the particle number difference between the two reservoirs and the difference in entropy is also related to delta mu and delta t by another matrix M, which is the matrix of thermodynamic coefficients, which is also symmetric to respect the Maxwell relations. Combining these two sets of equations, you can have this simple equation which describes the evolution in time of the chemical potential and temperature difference. You can work a bit more and just to find the evolution in time of delta n, the particle number difference, and delta t, which is given by this equation with another transport matrix lambda, which I will describe in a few, uh, in a few minutes. And this uh, equation describes the discharge of the capacitor, but including the thermal properties. Uh, we also see that appears uh, a new time scale, which is nothing but the RC time scale of our uh, over linear circuit, uh, which is given by this, uh, by this expression. And the transport matrix contains some effective transport coefficients, which are the following ones. We have the usual Lorentz number, which, is, which contains only properties of uh, the wire between the two reservoirs. So it's nothing but the ratio between the resistance and the thermal resistance. We have another Lorentz number of or an analog of a Lorentz number, but for the reservoirs, it contains only thermodynamic coefficients, and it's the ratio between uh, the um, specific heat at constant particle number divided of, and of the compressibility. But the most uh, important one is this one. It's the Zeebeck coefficient. As you see, it drives the off-diagonal transport properties of the whole system, and it contains both reservoir and junction properties. So as I said, both reservoirs and construction participate to transport. Uh, and this should be compared to the usual solid state situation. Let me do, uh, let me make two remarks. The first one is that if you are in such a case that the total Zeebeck coefficient vanishes, then in this case you have only pure thermal and particle transport, meaning that these two transport mechanisms are decoupled. At low temperature, you can show for a free Fermi gas that the ratio between the two Lorentz numbers tends to one, uh, which means that in this case, you have uh, a picture for the Wigman Fans law, which tells you that uh, at low temperature, the time scale for heat and particle transport uh, are the same. This is a simple interpretation of the Wigman Fans law. Uh, the other point is that even if the junction itself has no thermoelectric properties, which means that in this case the L12 is equal to zero. Then, even in this case, the total Zeebeck coefficient is uh, is not necessarily uh, vanishing, which means that there is an intrinsic thermoelectric effect driven by the finite dilatation of the reservoirs. And the question we can now ask is how to observe this thermoelectric effect. So, is there a good protocol to uh, to reveal these thermoelectric effects? And the ID, the answer is yes. And the ID is the following. Uh, you must first look at the solution to the transport equation for uh, a generic uh, initial condition, where you have both a different 
uh, particle number and different temperatures at the initial time, uh, you will see that we have two contributions. The first one in green is uh, almost an exponential decrease. It's a diagonal transport contribution, if you want. And the red one is proportional to the initial temperature difference. It, it's also proportional to the global z coefficient. And it's the thermometric contribution we are looking for. The point is that if you have delta n0 different from 0, uh, it's quite hard to distinguish between the absence and, uh, and presence of thermometric effect. So the idea is uh, quite straightforward. The idea is to make a two-step uh, experimental protocol. So you must first prepare the reservoir such that they contain an identical particle number. Uh, you close the constriction and you manage to heat one of the reservoirs separately. Then you reopen the constriction and you let the system evolve. And if there are some thermometric effects, hopefully what you will observe is the following thing. Uh, you will see an exponential decrease of the temperature, which is similar to this uh, green contribution. And if you have thermoelectricity in your system, what you will see is a flow of particles back and forth such that you restore thermodynamic equilibrium in the end. And so the idea is to look at the transient analog of the Zeebeck effect. So what happens in a, in a bit more detail? If you choose properly your initial condition, you have delta n as a function of time, which looks like this. It's a difference between two uh, decreasing exponentials with different time constants. This time constant being given by the eigenvalues of the transport matrix. Uh, it's proportional to the initial temperature difference. We are in linear response. And it's proportional also to this uh, Zeebeck coefficient, which means that uh, the sign of the particle current is given by the, by the Zeebeck coefficient, uh, which means that you can maybe observe the transition between uh, a physics that is, domin that is reservoir dominated with a positive Zeebeck coefficient and a physical situation in which we are dominated by the effect of the junction with a negative Zeebeck coefficient. <clears throat> so now, uh, all, uh, all that I said is quite general, and uh, I mean, provided that you, that you are in your response and you have quasi-static evolution uh, in the reservoir. Uh, the point is now, can we be a bit more precise such that we can make experimental signal estimates? Uh, and can we answer the question of the visibility of the effect, and can we find an appropriate parameter range to observe this? thermoelectric effects. Um, so this is the this is this idea. Uh, we need to take care of reservoirs and constriction. I mean, this still this has still to be compared to the to the solid state case. Um, so what we did is to treat uh, the reservoirs and the constriction separately, and we pictured the reservoirs as harmonically trapped thermic gases, uh, which contain non-interacting fermions, for, the, for, for a simple start. <coughs> the constriction uh, itself has different ingredients, meaning that the first one is the geometry, you can, uh, which, more, which is equivalent to the, to the density of states within the, within the junction here. Uh, the main ingredient is that you can play with the conduction regime, which means that you can be ballistic or diffusive if you consider non-interacting particles. And what we did is to compute the linear response coefficient within the landauer bittiker formula, which is still in line with, uh, with our ideas of uh, a mesoscopic physics uh, picture for this cold atom setup. In more detail, what we did is to compute the, uh, the thermodynamics and transport coefficients in this way. Uh, the, the thermodynamic coefficients are proportional to the moments of the density of states times the derivative of the Fermi function. And you see that the moment of order zero gives you the compressibility, order one dilatation, and order two gives you the, the specific heat. The transport coefficients have a similar expression. They are proportional to the moments of a function phi times the derivative of the Fermi function. This function phi is something that is called uh, the transport function, you can think of it as the density of state times the velocity of the carriers within the junction times uh, the transmission. This transmission actually takes uh, is here to uh, 
to take into account the effect of the conduction regime. Um, if you go back to the, to the standard mesoscopic physics, this transport function is nothing but the differential conductance, which is the derivative of the current with respect to the applied voltage. <coughs> and you have that the conductance is the zeroth order moment, the z is given by the moment of order one, and the heat uh, conductivity is given by the moment of order two. A bit more on this uh, transport function, it has the following expression, and you can uh, make, you can easily compute it for uh, non interacting particles. For example, in the ballistic case, you have, uh, in which you have a transmission which is equal to one uh, as a function of, uh, of energy, you have an approximate expression for this transport function, which is the following one, and which is uh, quite meaningful since it's nothing but the product of the number of channels, of open channels for conduction in the x direction, and uh, the number of channels which are open in the z direction, assuming that the transport is along the, the y direction. So this is the expression which we have here. I mean, the exact expression is in red here, and the approximate expression is here in yellow. Um, and in the diffusive case, you have now a transmission which is the ratio between the mid-free path and the, uh, and the length of the, uh, of the junction. And you have, you can also make the same kind of computation with an approximate expression which is, uh, which goes like epsilon to the five half. And you have here the exact expression and here in purple, the approximation. So here the, uh, the plots are made for typical typical values of the confinement strength within the, within the junction. So let me just uh, insist on the fact that we have uh, a stronger energy dependence of the transport function in the diffusive case, which will have some impact on the thermoelectric properties of the system in the end. And let me now switch uh, to, the, to, the, to the main results, which are, the, which are I mean, in a quite simple case. Um, which is the, the case of a, of a three-dimensional channel which contains non-interacting fermions. Um, and we can make a direct comparison between diffusive and ballistic transport. So in the diffusive case, you have here in green the Lorentz number for the reservoir, which will be of course the same for the, in the ballistic case you see that you have here in red the Lorentz number for the constriction in the presence of an harmonic trap in the transverse direction. And you have here for the, uh, for the, for the sake of the illustration, the Lorentz number uh, oops, for the constriction in the, um, in the absence of this harmonic trap, which is just here to compare two different uh, densities of states. And you see, that, I mean, the main result here is that you see that at very low temperature, these three coefficients tend to uh, tend to collide, which which is just the manifestation of the Wiedemann transpose. And in the ballistic case, uh, you see that um, the Lorentz number uh, in the absence of harmonic trap more or less has the same behavior. But you see that uh, if you consider the harmonic the harmonic trapping in the, um, in the construction, which will change the energy dependence of the transport function, then you have something that is identical to the reservoir, uh, to the Lorentz number for the reservoirs. But what is more important is the z coefficient, which really drives the thermoelectric properties of our, uh, of our whole system. So it's still in the same case, a three-dimensional channel, non-interacting fermions, and here are the different contributions to the uh, to the Z-Beck to the Z-Beck coefficient. Here in orange you have the reservoir contribution, which is the same in both cases, uh, which is just the, the ratio between uh, the dilatation and the compressibility. <coughs> and the most important curves are the blue and the red one, which show the behavior of the total z coefficient as a function of temperature, which is the only parameter we have for, for non-interacting fermions, and which are in the, in the two cases, so in the, in the absence or presence 
of an harmonic trap in the transverse direction. And you see that in the diffusive case, we have a transition between of a physics that is reservoir dominated with a positive ZF number to uh, a situation in which the physics is dominated by the construction, which means that the Zbeck number is negative. And here, in the ballistic case, we are in the absence of the harmonic trap. Uh, we are dominated by the physics of the reservoir. The Zbeck is positive. And in, the, and in the presence of the harmonic trap, in this simple picture, the Zbeck number simply vanishes, which means that we expect uh, that the, the thermoelectric effects are quite small in this case. Um, last, the last point is how to measure the setup efficiency su such that we can answer uh, the question about are these effects visible or not? Uh, still in the idea to find the, uh, the appropriate parameter range. Uh, so if you recall the, um, the expression for the particle number imbalance, then you see that this expression has a maximum at some time t max here. And the idea is to define uh, this visibility. I mean, it's really quite brutal definition. But uh, the visibility can be simply defined as the ratio between this maximal effect to the, to the relative uh, temperature difference you, uh, you imposed at the initial time. And this is the, really the quantity that contains, uh, that tells you in which parameter range you should be to observe uh, these thermoelectric effects. So still, in the case of a 3D channel with non interacting fermions, if you compare, the, now you can directly compare the different regimes and uh, the different densities of states. So, the, so now you see that, uh, as expected, you have, I mean, from the estimation of Zbeck coefficient, you have a compensation between reservoir and channel effect in the case of uh, ballistic conduction uh, with an if you take into account the harmonic trapping in the transverse direction, which means that in this case, uh, the effects will be, are expected to be quite small. Um, and the point is that uh, if you look at what happens when you go to the diffusive regime, which simply means that you change, you make stronger the energy dependence of the transport function, then in this case, you have the domination of the channel effect, which means that you have a Zbeck coefficient, which becomes negative, which means that you go in the other direction. The particle current flows in the other direction. And um, this is the, the main message, which is that if you increase so if you increase the energy dependence of the transport function, then you increase the channel contribution to the effect. So hopefully we can see a uh, thermoelectric effect with cold atoms. In this case, the transport rises as a combination of reservoir and channel properties. Uh, especially we have uh, an, an intrinsic thermoelectricity which is driven by the, by the finite dilatation of the reservoirs. We have proposed uh, some a simple protocol to reveal these off-diagonal transport effects uh, within, with the ETH setup. And this kind of uh, experiment can be uh, envisioned to probe uh, high temperature transport theories, but without the flag of, uh, of phonons. And what's next? Uh, what we are doing now is to make uh, a more precise model for the, for the channel and try to make a comparison to the, uh, to the experiments. Uh, I will flash briefly some, uh, some small results after the, after the conclusion. Uh, some, there are, you can play many different games. The first one may be to, uh, to include the effect of interactions, which are expected to improve the thermal power of the construction. You can imagine uh, to look at the effect of a lattice uh, in the channel, and, and more in line with mesoscopic physics, you can imagine to make use uh, of, uh, of some pumping to, uh, to, make an, to look at some analog of AC transport in this, uh, in this case. Since I have some, since I have a few minutes left, let me show you some comparison between uh, theory and experiment. So what the ETH, what the ETH guys did is really to, to realize uh, the setup we, we have proposed. And what they observed is that in the, um, in the ballistic case, uh, there are indeed uh, very small thermoelectric effects, which become 
significantly stronger. I mean, if you look here at this maximal effect, which is about 4%, then if you go to stronger and stronger speaker, you can see, I mean, here the time scale becomes too long, but the point is that the effect comes to, goes from 4% in the ballistic case to something like 13% uh, in, the, in the strong speckle case, in this case. So hopefully this will, uh, I mean, this, and it compares not too bad to the, uh, to the theory that I just described you. So we have to thank the, the ETH guys with, which we, with whom we had a lot of discussion and who performed these, uh, these beautiful experiments. And thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Carlos. So, if you have any more questions, please. Can you tell us your algorithm to transport 2D? Uh, in principle, yes. I mean, the, here is the here is the simple case. It's really the simple case of transport in one direction. But we, it's just, I mean, and the other two directions are just transverse harmonic confinement. And in principle, with this uh, transport function formalism, you can extend to. Uh, dimension and I mean in principle yes. Yes. So quick question is that so do we also expect to see any interesting features near this position? Um yes. We I mean uh, if you think in terms of if you think of a super fluid for example you can uh but how are the others do you sorry? I know about conductivity, but how about the other? Yes, the the, yes uh, it's, it's expected that uh, a superfluid has no z uh, equation. Yeah. It has no geometric properties. So maybe we can just yes, uh, look at what happens between and make a I mean, plot, for example, the z as a function of interaction strength. And if we, if we go to the unitary regime, then we expect that at least uh, where the gas is superfluid, it's, uh, this z equation vanishes. More questions? Well, let's hear the speaker again.